bit of a weird vibe. We kind of weren't welcome here anymore. Not much is going right today. I've made Riley do a gear review. What's up, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Elena, and this is Riley, and this is our home, La Vagabond. <laughs> We've been sailing around the world for the last five years and have recently found ourselves with a stowaway. Meet Lenny. Subscribe and welcome aboard. So I think it's a blockage in the carburetor, or it probably is. But anyway, I'm gonna pull that apart this afternoon and spray some carb cleaner on it. There were such good vibes when we first arrived here, but now everyone's kind of seen us in town and there's a bit of a weird vibe. Today, one of the fishermen, he didn't get super fired up, did he? But he wasn't afraid to tell us that we kind of weren't welcome here anymore. We were supposed to be in quarantine, but that's not what we've heard. But each port has different rules. So he said, if the police find us, we might get in trouble. So anyway, and people are just kind of staring at us. And As far as we know, that's incorrect and we haven't done anything wrong. But yeah, obviously yeah, these guys see us as outsiders and yeah. understandably don't really want us wandering around Yeah, we town. feel like we're a walking disease right now. So we're going back to the boat. Yeah, he basically told us that we, we weren't welcome and we would have to quarantine before coming inland and... Did he say we weren't welcome? And I mean, it's he was just a fisherman, he wasn't the police. Yeah, yeah, which is the opposite of what we heard from Lagos Marina. Yeah, yeah. We heard that the restaurants and ferries would be opening in a couple of days. This meant that more tourists would be coming to the island and things would lean more towards normal. Pre and post COVID norms differing greatly, obviously. But anyway, we're just heading back to the boat. <laughs> Let's not annoy the locals. Yeah, let's go. Yep. In our boat, that doesn't work. <laughs> Let's putt off into the horizon. The back of the boat here is bumping around, so Andre and I are going to go into town, buy some carb cleaner, take our tools and do it on the beach there, clean everything we can with the carb cleaner, and hopefully the uh, engine starts running a bit smoother because we need our car to be working. Not much has gone right today. Haven't got much work. I say, I haven't got much work done on the outboard. I think that that might be the start of this cold front. And this might not let up. And we've got no engine on the outboard to get home. <laughs> yeah, straight back. Success, boys? <laughs> no, we successfully survived, <laughs> yeah. which was not necessarily uh, going to happen there at one point. Oh, bad luck, boys. <laughs> you want some warm lunch? Yeah, yes. it's so warm in here. <laughs> Being cooked here, pantaloons. We're making burritos. It's a burrito hunt day. And the boys are so hungry, it's hilarious. I've just brought out the nuts and I'm like, eat these, sit down, stop pecking up the food. Well, 
Well done. The boys are having a stone skipping competition. Skip off. Best out of five, what does the loser have to do? Scrub the hole. Oh, Scrub the hole. Alright. Let's and do it's, it. It's aggregate. <laughs> oh, what is going on? Oh, I've got two, you've got one. <laughs> oh. Slightly weightier option for this throw. Mm, that wasn't very good. Really talked it up, didn't ya? It needs to be a five skimmer skip. Come on, Andre, the best one. Oh, no! <laughs> this is the second squid jig that Andre's found on the beach. So we're going to go squidding tonight. <laughs> yeah. Just got the engine on because Riley really wants a hot shower. <laughs> no, he was cleaning the holes. I said, Look, I'll, oh, I'll sorry, fire up the that's engine so right. you can have a hot shower. Yeah, not you, it was for Andre because Andre's going in the water. How do you feel about this, Andre? Amazing. <laughs> really? Yep. You're such a weirdo, I love it. <laughs> can't say I've got too much sympathy for you, mate. That's yep. what happens when you can't skim, I guess. <laughs> Very kind of you to turn on the engine for hot water for Andre. Have you done that for me before? I was going to say, I don't think I would have extended mm, that. You're very to lucky, you. Andre. <laughs> yeah. He probably felt Maybe bad. A <laughs> so, a whole bunch of people asked us what jobs that we needed to get done and what did we get done at Sopra after our North Atlantic crossing. And uh, I just thought I'd outlay a whole bunch of that sort of stuff for everyone right now. So, this was a season's worth of jobs plus a North Atlantic crossing. Um, all sort of culminating in this jobs list. So there was quite a bit to get done. So, in fan, port forward, because that actually fell off. Fixed flexible light at the nav station, I'm pretty sure Lenny actually pulled that off. Glue the rubber on the sail drive, replace gear oil on the sail drive, that's just standard stuff that needs to be done at the end of every season. Gel coat repairs and polishing. Day's music ain't got same soul. I like that old time rockin'. I think we dropped a winch handle and a shackle and a few other things. That's just standard crossing stuff. Rigging check. There was quite a significant rigging, not failure, but issues. So they replaced one of the flexible steel wire ropes. Water leak in the engine room on the starboard side was just causing me so much dramas on that crossing. Water leak at the stern on the port side hatch has been fixed. Radar reflector installed, that fell off mid crossing and landed on the deck and just shattered everywhere. Send life raft off for inspection and refit it in place. The life raft just chafed free. It was um, pretty difficult for Nikki and I to replace in 40 knots of wind. Sliding doors were a bit, I don't know, I guess rusty or had gooed up a bit so they just went over them and made them slide. Chair in the saloon had worn free because just of the excessive bumping and grinding and clinging and clattering. Chair in the cockpit was just absolutely wiped out by a massive wave and they redid the anti fouling So yeah, we got a fair bit of stuff done at uh, Sopramar so big thanks to those guys. 
We've had a pretty clean bomb since leaving the boatyard earlier this year, thanks to International Paints who hooked us up with some anti-fouling. Over a few emails, they suggested we go with their Micron anti-fouling, which is their premium line and will protect against slime and fouling organisms. Hopefully, with less time spent scraping the hull, Riley will have less chance of ending up with another crab in his ear, like in the Galapagos Islands. Proper anti-fouling stops the spread of invasive species and having a slippery bum underwater means more time sailing and less time motoring. The finish we got was really, really nice. I couldn't stop patting it. Thanks so much. If anyone out there needs a touch up, I'll link international paints in the description below. Legends. It is laundry day, everyone, and food shopping day. We are going over there to that town. We're pretty excited about it. So the outboard's fixed. There was no carb cleaner on the island that we could buy. But in the process of looking for it, Andre actually met a dude in town who had some and him and Andre pulled apart the carby and fixed it. It only cost us 10 euro. Absolutely incredible. So we just threw out a stern anchor and tied our forward line here. And this is town. There's people out and about. It's very exciting. So we need to do our laundry and do a food shop. Come to dance, fallen leaves are now covering our feet Come to dance, there's no harder to float We've got 25 minutes till I have to go back to the laundry and switch it over to the dryer and um, dance, yeah, there's people out and about, cafes and restaurants are open We're gonna eat out for the first time in forever Andre's leading the way This is a pretty nice looking town, eh? Hey? Yeah, it's cute yeah. I like the European streets. We got back to La Vagabond and someone forgot to tie up the dinghy properly. I'm glad it wasn't me. Never again will I forget to tie a good knot after my embarrassing rescue mission of 2014. Thanks Jan, you're the best. <laughs> Riley just, well, he was lazy, he looped it over and then forgot about it. Yeah, yeah, I know what I am. Uh... I just luckily just looked out of, uh, of Lily's catamaran and so yeah. on. <laughs> Thank you. Are you guys coming later to the big boat? Yeah. Sweet. Maybe soon. Like. Yeah, we're also like just having a coffee and then maybe going in like half an hour. Or okay, so. cool. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah, mate. <laughs> no Come on, you're gonna get hurt. No, please, no, please. I just washed my hair. Please, babe, <laughs> please. It's really annoying. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> ah! It's been 10 minutes. He's regretted his decision of jumping on the pole to see how long he can hold on for. Instant regret. There's <laughs> only one way out of this. Yep. So this pirate ship is pretty freaking cool. Ronnie would be the closest thing that I've met to an actual pirate in my travels thus far. And so the story goes. Ronnie used to be the engineer on board and the previous organization running the ship went bankrupt or something like that. Bona Onda was built in 1910 as a fishing vessel in the Netherlands and transformed during the last century to a three mast topsail schooner. Since 2000, she sailed across the Atlantic doing social work and sail training Anyway, having gone bankrupt, the company offered to pay Ronnie's wages by giving him the ship. So there we were, on an acquired pirate vessel run by a pirate, eating Monday night pizza. Before Ronnie can do anything too exciting with her, she definitely needs a refit. He started an association to find members and sponsors so that Buona Onda can actually stay afloat. Being a member means that you can also crew on board, I'll do a link for that below for anyone that's keen to have a go at this. And um, good on you, Ronnie. All the best, mate. All right, this is it. Riley, get off your phone. We got a pipe to fix. I'm dissing my mates. Lenny, They've been calling me smug again. You put your pants on. <laughs> Andre, stop admiring the view. Yep. Let's get to work. <laughs> hey Siri, play Motorhead Ace of Spades. I'm on it. Here's Ace of Spades by Motorhead. <laughs> this occasionally gets blocked, so I'm trying to find there's going to be. He's blaming me for all blockages. Elena shaves her um, eyebrow pencil. Eyebrow pencil. 
and I've frequently noticed the bowl full of eyebrow pencil shavings. Straight after, it always gets a bit harder to sink the water. Exactly. I haven't drawn my eyebrows on forever because my friend Roxanne feather touch tattooed them on. Thank you, Roxanne. <laughs> Never coming off. No more eyebrow pencil. Your bedroom, your books, your boyfriend. A two cent coin. A coin got down there, Elena. Really? Yeah. <laughs> All right, time to get down now, Lenny. Where do you find the time? Our neighbours brought us over some mackerel and um, he was nice enough to gut them for us and I've just cut them in half. What do you call it? Butterfly wing? Butterfly fillet. Butterfly, uh, butterfly filleted them and we're going to cook them um, and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> and Andre just got another squid. Come on Andre, we need more. Tonight we're going to have mackerel because we have four. We got given four and there's a lot there for us. Happiness in your life is the sort of, you know, almost hedonistic kind of positive emotion type stuff, right? You're happy in your life if you have lots of, you know, positive emotions and laughter and so on and, and not many negative emotions. Like, relatively speaking, there's not a tremendous amount of sadness and anger, although we can debate about how much of that you want. We're rolling, guess. What's up, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I've made Riley do a gear review because we've never done it before. Let me start with the new addition is the gimbal. Uh, it's a Zion, which I would have mispronounced, Weeble S. Uh, we stick mostly the 5D on that, and that just gives a smooth shot. Uh, but we're really still experimenting with that. That thing is brand new. This is the 10 to 18 mil, which we usually have on the 80D, which is a really good sort of uh, vlogging setup. This is the 100 mil macro lens, so if you ever see the really close up stuff, that's really good for that. 24 to 105 is the one that I will take to land if I ever go to land, because it kind of does everything. You get reasonable bokeh if you're zoomed into the 105, but the shots are generally shaky. And our life is always about compromise, because if you've got Lenny under one arm, and you're trying to drive the tender. And so a lot of the time we're just sort of making do with what we've got. 16 to 35 mil is what we've mainly used for the last year and a half to two years with the 5D. The 80D is really light. And yeah, we've gone back to using it again. It just feels more comfortable. You are more likely to grab it when conditions are rough or tough. GoPro, pretty self-explanatory when it's wet and rough. Oh, actually the mouthpiece is really cool. I'll stick that in my mouth and I can run around and do some stuff. Mavic Air uh, is one that we haven't lost into the water. Woo! And we've recently got the Mavic 2 Pro. That's so cool because it's so small. This one here is a beast. The camera lasts for 30 minutes. That's it. I think that's it. Is that fast enough? Best cuddle fish. Hell yeah, Andre. <laughs> Me and you, mate. Yep. <laughs> we have been out here for an hour. This is the first squid we've got. <gasps> oh my god, don't you lose this. I'll be so sad. Get in there. Yes! Alright, let's keep going. Join us next week here in Kalatra for more fun and a cook up on the beach. What a time to be alive. See you guys soon. Ciao. Whoa, whoa.